Hi everyone, welcome to Kiki and Kibbits. It's Mary and I am here with Inmate to Roommate, Season 2, Episode 2. And you know it's going to be a good one when the title of the episode is This Is Not a Brothel. Okay, so far, Inmate to Roommate is bringing it. Okay, it is a Matt Sharp production show, and we all know that Matt Sharp also produces 90 Day Fiance and Love at the Lockup, which they have slowly drained the life and the authenticity out of both shows. Okay, so this is the second season of Inmate to Roommate, and I hope that it remains to be authentic, real and raw and um it doesn't turn into a bunch of actors just looking for screen time which unfortunately at least 90 day fiance has turned into that love after lockup not so much but i could see it heading to that so let's get right into season two episode two this is not a brothel so we're going to start off with veda and annalisa with good old Mark. Okay. Mark is fresh out of prison and he just wants to get some ass. Okay. Let's face it. So when we last left them in see in episode one, okay. Um, Mark is freshly out of prison, walking down the dusty road. Okay. To meet Annalisa Veda and Annalisa's daughter. Okay. Who is like Mark says, miss suspicious okay and she has every fucking right to be suspicious okay and um well he's out in the first two minutes okay at the respectful a car pulls up and we have his three home girls in the car okay so mark is mark was trying to play it off that he was surprised but annalisa was like hmm and um, Beto's like, do you want to introduce us to your friends? We never see him formally introduce them. But um, guess what? The girls are coming out to eat with them too, okay? They were going to head to a restaurant because, you know, they're all kind of hungry. Let's bring the girls with us. And guess what? I'm going to ride in their car. So Mr. Veda, Miss Annalisa, and Miss Suspicious, you guys ride in your car. Okay, and I'll be in my car with my homegirls. They got to the restaurant and he sits with his homegirls, you know, and and at the table, Annalisa and her daughter are trying to express that, you know, there's going to be rules that you have to follow and this and that. And he's all like, this ain't a transfer, you know, I'm not transferring from one jail to another. This is a release. You know, and one thing that really struck me, what he said was he, you know, gets it that Miss Annalisa may be a little upset about these girls showing up to pick him up, but today's all about him. And I'm like, dude, are we a little cocky? So anyway, okay, the girls are sitting at the table smirking because they're getting a free meal out of this, okay? And you know... Eventually, Mark is going to get the booty. Okay. So the girls are sitting at the table, smirking at all this. Annalisa is not happy. Her daughter is like clenching her fist under the table because she wants to knock him the fuck out. Okay. She is doing everything she can not to jump over the table and knock his cocky ass the fuck out. They get to the house. His first impression, this ungrateful bastard, is that the house stinks. It's old. This is not the play of pad that he wanted. Uncle Pee Wee must be spinning in his grave at this ungrateful little bastard, okay? So he's like, mm, this is not my play of pad, but, you know, I, I'll, I'll deal with it for now. He sees the room, and he's like, this is definitely not it. I might use this as a storage room. Motherfucker, you just came out of a, a cell that's like what? three by six or, or, or however big the cells are, what, what you said was a one inch mattress. And you have the nerve to say that this room that Annalisa set up for you, which is perfectly fine to me. It has a bed and a dresser. I'm sure there's a TV in there. I mean, come on. It, it's a perfectly good room, dude. So 
he's dissing the house. He's dissing the the, uh, the room, you know. He, uh, and guess what? He's not going to sit there and talk to Annalisa because uh, he got some booty waiting for him. Okay, so he wants to go and go hang out with his friends. Annalisa's like, I thought we were going to sit and have a chat. And he's like, No, I'm going out. You know, I, I'm I, I just been released and I'm going out. So Annalisa gives him 24 hours to get his butt back so they could sit and have a serious conversation because Annalisa's already getting ready to put her foot in his ass so far. He's going to be spitting shoe leather for the next year. So she's like, I want to talk to him. We need to have a conversation. And Mark comes back with two out of the three chicks, okay? The chick in the middle disappeared. I don't know where she went, okay? But the chick on the left and the chick on the right returned um, back to Annalisa's home with Mark. And um, the chick on the right, she has a lot of mouth, okay? She has a lot of mouth. And she's lucky that Miss Suspicious, Annalisa's daughter, wasn't there because um, I think she would have pulled her fucking hair out, okay? So Mark is all like, oh, you know, the Airbnb reservation got all fucked up. So can they spend the night? And Annalise is like, where are they going to spend the night? In my room? And where are they going to sleep? In my bed? And where are you going to sleep? In my bed with them. I'm a player. Annalise is like, hold up. I don't fucking think so. I'm sorry, young ladies. I have nothing against you, okay? But you are not spending the night in my house. You guys got to go. So the one on the left shakes Annalise's hand. And when Annalise goes to shake the one on the right hand, she's like, nah, I ain't shaking your hand. Mm-mm. No, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. Giving Annalisa lip and attitude. And when she's walking out the door, she's like, bye, bitch. If I was Annalisa, I would have snatched her by her hair from behind. Excuse me, what did you call me? In my home? As you're walking out of my home? No, I don't think so, little bitch. So, we all know that this with Mark and Annalisa is not going to work out, okay? We see next week. Mark had the nerve to turn to Veda and say, you know, we need to have a man-to-man talk because, you know, it seems like you can't say things that you really want to say in front of your wife. And Veda was like, I say whatever I want to say when I feel like saying them. Hmm. Hot mess express. Okay. Moving on. We have Daniel and Kathy. Bless their hearts. It's time for Daniel to pick him up. To pick up Devin, okay. Um, and Devin has and Devin's really young, okay. That's the first thing. He's really, really young. He has a really foul mouth, like I do. And Mr. Daniel and Kathy are not gonna put up with this in their home, okay. Daniel and Kathy are very religious. I mean, they have rules. For Devin, and after hearing Devin's mouth, when um, Daniel picked him up with, with Devin's sister Carissa, he's like, "I think I might have to add, you know, no, no cursing, onto the rules because um, I'm not gonna have him disrespect my wife by dropping a bunch of f bombs." So they go to a waffle. Oh, this idiot got some tattoos in jail. One of them, including a got milk tattoo. Yeah. He got a got milk tattoo. Even his sister was like, you're a moron. So they go to the Waffle House, and he's, like, overwhelmed by all the choices. He doesn't know what to get. And Daniel's like, we have plenty of time, plenty of options. And Devin's like, oh, by the way, speaking of time, I have been given some extra time before I have to get to Texas. So I technically don't have to be there until the 30th. So I was thinking of leaving the morning of the 28th because I want to spend some time with my family here in Colorado before I go out to Texas. And Daniel's like, hold up, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. This wasn't part of the agreement. The reason why I flew out here was for us to drive back together. And now um, you're changing the plan up on me? Okay, let me pray on it 
and I'll give you an answer. So now all three are in the car, Devin, his sister, and Daniel, and um, they're driving back, back to the sister's house, and Kathy calls, okay? Kathy calls, and she's like, hi, honey, how are you? What's going on? And Daniel tells her that Devin has changed up the plan, and um, now Daniel is coming back without Devin, okay? And Devin will be driving back on his own on the 28th to get back to Texas in time for the 30th for what his parole officer told him that he needs to check in by the 30th. Kathy is like, hold up, hold up, hold up. This wasn't part of the plan. This is ridiculous. Um, we, we made, you know, we had a plan. We had an agreement. There's rules. He needs to follow the rules, blah, blah, blah. And Devin is listening to her on speakerphone from the back seat. And Devin's like, you know, I'm starting to think, oh, what did I get myself into? Because Kathy sounds like she's going to force me to, to follow rules. Well, um, you know, Devin, that kind of happens. When you burn all your bridges with your family and you are reduced to depending on kind strangers for putting a roof over your head, yeah, you need rules, okay? Now, we meet someone new this week. Her name is Cindy. She's 56 and she's from Vining, Minnesota, which apparently has a population of 62 people. And these are Cindy's words, not mine. You see a huge statue of a foot and you just go a little bit past it and you can visit the woman with no foot, with no right foot. So Cindy lost her foot due to diabetes back in 2010 when COVID was happening. She couldn't feel her foot, found out she was diabetic. Her foot was amputated. Okay, now Cindy needs help at home. And she's hoping that Jennifer, who has spent um, basically eight years in and out of the system on various drug charges, um, is going to be the answer to her prayers, okay? Cindy was introduced to Jennifer by their mutual friend, Richard. Richard thinks Jennifer will be able to help her out around the house and, you know, basically be a companion for Cindy. So Cindy meets up with her friend, Angela, okay? And they're going to paint some cabinets before, um, before Jennifer gets there. And her friend, Angela, is like, Cindy, do you have any idea what you're getting yourself into, by the way? Did, do you know? What kind of drug she's into, by the way? And Cindy is all like, mm, no, I, I don't know. And her friend Angela's like, do you have any idea of the signs of an overdose? And Cindy's all like, mm, no, I don't know. And Angela's, her friend Angela, who herself has served time in, in prison for drug-related offenses, is like, I don't think this is a really good idea. Cindy, okay, first of all, this is a really small town, okay? There is so much bingo and soap operas you can watch before you lose your mind. And do you think Jennifer is going to adjust to this small town of 65 people, weekly bingo and soap operas being the highlight of our day? I don't think that this is going to work out, Cindy. So now, Cindy is going to pick up Jennifer with their mutual friend, Richard, who thought this was a great idea to begin with, okay? And um, Cindy's nervous. She's thinking about what her friend Angela said, and she's like, I don't know if this is going to be a good idea, but we shall see. So when the episode um, ends, Cindy is sitting there waiting for Jennifer to come out, but we see next week, because Jennifer says that one of her main goals is to fix the bridges so she could reunite with her children. So next week, we see Jennifer basically saying, if Cindy thinks that she's going to have a Cinderella around to help her clean, take care of her, and give her money, because 
apparently Cindy expects Jennifer to help her pay her bills. Jennifer's like, hold up. I'm at Cinderella here and I need to take care of myself first before I could take care of anybody else. And you know something? This is another case of the inmate making more sense than the non-inmate. Okay, so we're going to see what happens. So moving on, we have David and Aaron, who are currently driving off into the sunset to David's house. Okay, so David is kind of like, I don't know, he's just all into the movement. Okay, all into reform. He wants to reform the criminal justice system. Okay, Aaron just wants bacon and a pair of pants with pockets. Okay, let's start off small. So Aaron is like, I want bacon. Can you take me to a place that has bacon? I have been craving, jonesing for a cigarette and for bacon. Okay, so David takes him to this place. He orders a breakfast burrito with bacon, with bacon on the side. Okay, so. David is talking about taking Aaron straight away, okay, after he eats all his bacon to a protest, okay, about wrongfully convicted people and their families. And Aaron is like, listen, I know that we've been talking for two and a half years about criminal justice system reform and all these issues and all that. And listen, I get it, but this is my first day out. I don't want to attend a protest. I want to eat bacon and get some pants that have pockets in it, okay? Because Aaron is 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 having pocket FOMO right now because in prison, your, your pants are only allowed to have one pocket. And Aaron just wants to get into a regular pair of pants with back pockets, front pockets, side pockets. He wants all the pockets, okay? David's like, you know, and it's a little disappointing that he didn't want to go to the protest. And it's really disappointing that Aaron said that there are some people in prison that deserve to be there because David believes prison is a legal extension of slavery. Okay. And it needs reform. Listen, I get that, David. And I love that you're so idealistic. But like Aaron said, Unfortunately, that's just the way it goes. There are people in prison that are not wrongfully convicted and do deserve to be there. So, okay. So basically, they get to the house and Aaron is starting to realize that the movement and reform is David's life. Okay, he knew nothing about David before he walked out of those gates, okay, while he was eating bacon, he found out that David is a social studies, a high school social studies teacher. He's like, I had no idea the dude was a teacher until now. And when he gets to his house, he loves the fact that he has his own bedroom and bathroom, that he doesn't have to share a bathroom with any men anymore, okay? Aaron's loving this, but, you know, a part of him is like, this dude is kind of weird, he has a file cabinet filled of files about cases of wrongfully convicted people, justice reform. And like I said, Aaron is just like, yo, I just want some bacon. I want some normal pants, take a shower in my bathroom that I don't have to share with another dude. And, you know, just kind of take a step back, David. I don't want to attend protests on my first day. Just take a step back. Okay. So I think that these two are not going to work out, but it's not going to be Aaron's fault, okay? So now next week, we get to see Marisol and Jim, okay, the pastors, go to pick up Mickey, and they realize that Mickey has these violence charges, okay, that they didn't know about before. And um, Marisol and Jim are like, hmm, Maybe this is not such a good idea. Well, I could have told you that. But anyway, Inmates and Roommate airs every Friday night on um, A&E, a okay, every Friday night at 
10, I believe. It airs right after 60 Days In, but on A&E's website, you can actually watch the episodes. They upload them, I believe, the day after they air on A&E. I will put a link in my description to the A&E website where you could find season one of Inmates of Roommate and season two. So thank you so much for watching me. Please subscribe if you don't already. Hit the like button. Share my video with a friend or 10. And please consider joining my membership. Thank you so much. See you next week. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye.